let's turn this plain drum loop into a huge cinematic soundscape. Don't believe it's possible? Hey, I'm Vulture Culture, and in this video, I'm going to show you five simple steps to transform your boring static audio into infinitely generating melodic soundscapes using Filterverse, the brand new plugin from Polyverse Music. And I'm gonna do it without using any MIDI whatsoever. So let's get started. Step one is going to be using the Robocomb filter in Filterverse to turn your audio into a drone. Here's the raw drum loop sampled out of one of my vintage drum machines. Now I'll forgive you if you think that a filter plugin can only do something like this. And of course it could do that, but there's actually many different types of filters built into Filterverse. Now I'm recording this during the public beta, but when the plugin releases fully, it's gonna have many more filters than this. But all we need for this example is the Robocomb. So what is Robocomb? Well, essentially it is two nested comb filters that can actually be increased all the way up to 36 comb filters by moving this type fader. And what are comb filters? Well, they're essentially really short delay lines. If I bring the cutoff down. You can hear that that's just a short delay, and if I increase the resonance, that's like the feedback on a delay plugin. And if you feed it back enough, you start to get a note. One of the great features of Filterverse is instead of just using number values, I can actually double click here and enter a note like E1, let's say. Hit enter and it automatically moves the cutoff to that frequency, which is 41.20 Hertz. Now, if I increase the resonance, it's tuned to the note E1. If I crank it all the way to 10, you can hear that the feedback completely dominates the sound, getting louder and louder. But close to 10, like a value of 9.75, is enough for us to get a usable note that's still being informed by the program material. With a nice long release on that sound. Now, like I said, we can increase the number of nested comb delays by moving this type fader. The difference on this sound is pretty subtle. The biggest thing I can hear is more of the high harmonics take longer to decay. In this case, I want a nice dark drone, so I'm actually gonna apply some dampening here. And you can see that it works a lot like a reverb plugin where the more you increase the dampening, the less time the high frequencies have to decay. Symmetry adjusts the balance between the internal and external nets and stretch adjusts the distance between them. Both of these faders are better understood by just listening to what they do than me trying to explain them. those are really great ways for you to tune your comb filter sound but in this case all we really need is to leave these on their defaults and this is perfect now that we've turned our drum loop into a drone step two is going to be automating the root note of that drum using the meta knob in the sequencer filterverse is divided in half to filter controls on the top and modulation on the bottom and it's really a business in the front party in the back type situation because here is where all of the magic of this plugin happens now that we've loaded a couple of modulation sources into filterverse you can see these little icons icons have showed up underneath anything that can be modulated in this particular filter's controls. So let's modulate the cutoff with the meta knob. At first glance, the meta knob seems like just a big macro knob. Which isn't all that exciting, except that we have this little quantize option down here. If we set the quantization to a minor scale, now all of the information the meta knob spits out is going to be in the key of our song. So we only get musically useful values, and now we can modulate the meta knob itself with the sequencer. If I click down here, it expands out the sequencer so we can see what's happening, and it's mirrored, of course, up top in the control section up here. So even though it's called a sequencer, it also can work like an LFO, as you're seeing here. This is a nice sinusoidal LFO. But we have many patterns that we could choose from. One of the greatest strengths of Filterverse is how many and how flexible all of these patterns are. We can get into some pretty complicated stuff here. 
but we don't need to use a pre-built pattern. We can actually just use the pattern zero here. We can reduce the steps down to four steps because I want to use four notes. And then if we adjust the shape from A0 up to C0, you can see we have a four step staircase, which is perfect because we don't want the pitch of the cutoff to be moving around. We want it to stay on particular notes. So if I play this now, you'll hear that it's moving the cutoff way more than I want it to. So what we can do is go into the modulation section for the meta knob here and bring this down. I found a value of six worked for this example. You can hear that highest note is a perfect fifth away from the root note. Now all we have to do is adjust these stairs so we get the right notes. So if I play this back, you can hear that we have the three notes of an E minor triad, which is G, B, and E. So now all we have to do is slow this way down so we get a nice impression of a changing bass note to the drone. And just as a reminder, we can take the dry wet knob all the way down so you can hear what we started with transformed into where we're at. Pretty crazy. Let's slow down that rate even more. Now for step three, we're gonna use another comb filter to create a randomly generated melodic pattern over the top of that. The canny eyed among you might've noticed that there's actually three filters in Filterverse, and we can swap this one over to a Robocomb as well. Let's turn this Robocomb on and the original Robocomb off. That way we're essentially soloing what we're doing with this filter. And it's essentially rinse and repeat. This time, instead of choosing E1, I'm going to pick B2 and we'll increase the resonance, maybe not not quite as far and increase some dampening as a starting point. And you can hear with these higher frequencies, you've really changed the sound into a pluck type of sound. And the same idea, we're going to modulate the cutoff to get different notes, but this time we're going to use, instead of the sequencer, the random module. The random module is similar to the sequencer module in a sense, but it gives us random values instead of sequenced out values. So we can set the quantization to minor again, but right now the range is 10 octaves, which is pretty extreme. If I increase the rate, you'll be able to hear how crazy this is. Which is a pretty cool sound in and of itself, but we don't need all of that. We could probably get away with two or three octaves worth of melody. And you'll notice that it's going both positive and negative from this cutoff point. So if we make it unipolar, now all of those values are gonna be above the cutoff point, which is what we want for this melody. Now I'm losing some of those high notes, so I'm gonna just dial the dampening back a bit. Now my only real problem with this is that it's a very static sound because you're getting a different note every 16th note. So step four is going to be modulating the rate of the random module with another sequencer. The way we're gonna do that is by hitting re-trigger. You see a little modulation key pops up here. We're gonna turn on another sequencer and then we can just modulate the rate with this sequencer. Which sounds pretty chaotic, so why don't we pick a new pattern that has more of a stepped nature to it. That way it retains a little bit more integrity. And we can just slow that down. And lower the amount of modulation. So I just played around with the rates a bit and adjusted the modulation amount and it sounds like this. So we're getting all sorts of interesting rhythmic patterns, but it's all still tempo sync to your DAW. Moving on to step five, we're going to use the third filter in Filterverse 
and we're going to use the space filter, which is essentially a reverb algorithm reimagined as a filter. Now to do this the right way, we're gonna turn back on our drone and go over here to the routing panel. And you can see that we actually have different options of how this routing works. Now, what I wanna do is have the drum loop come in and get split into two channels, one for the drone and one for the melodic pattern we just made, and have both of those fed into the reverb. So we're gonna select this algorithm. And now both of these are going to be fed into space. Now, counterintuitively, as you move the cutoff down, you actually get a bigger space. <laughs> And then resonance acts as a decay control. We can add diffusion, which is going to smear out the transients and give us a more ethereal sound to our reverb. If that's too bright, we could actually dampen it just like on the Robocombs, the dampening control here. For this example, I actually like the dampening all the way off because I want a big, bright, cavernous reverb. We can add detune, and what that's going to do is modulate the taps inside of the reverb, which will give us a more beautiful, lush chorus to sound and also help break up any metallic resonances that are in the reverb. Now we can dial the dry wet knob back a little bit on this filter module. That's only affecting this module if you want to affect the whole plugin that's down here. But this in combination with a little pre-delay will make the reverb sound a lot bigger. really like that reverb sound. So now what I'm going to do is go into the random module here and increase the range of the octaves of the Robocomb. And so what that's going to do is give us an extra octave so we get some more high notes in there. Which sounds really great, but I think we need to reduce the dampening even further to make sure that those notes get through. And yeah, the sky's the limit here. You can basically make this as small or as big as you want. All the way into a huge infinite reverb. A couple of bonus tips here. We could make the stereo spectrum even wider by opening up another sequencer, going into the melodic Robocomb and modulating the pan with it. We can turn the tempo off here so we can get a non-perfect value. So we just get something moving around in here. And we could do the same trick with the decay time for the reverb with another sequencer turning the tempo sync off as well. So if I go to the modulation icon here and I increase some amount of modulation to the decay here, you can see what's going on. The time of the reverb is being modulated. This is so cool. If you press the circle, we now get two circles, one for the left and right channels. Sounds like this. You can see that the left and right channels are now being processed in opposite fashion. So as the left channel's decay gets longer, the right channel's is getting shorter. And we could take that even further by hitting it again and then adjusting the amounts independently.
further increasing the stereo spread of the reverb. Now, if you wanted to get the sound in just one cheeky step, you could just search for the instant dark ambient patch I made in the factory library of Filterverse. It really is that easy to use Filterverse to make instant dark ambient a la cryo chamber or itinerant ghost. I'm Vulture Culture, and this video barely scratched the surface of what's possible with Filterverse. This plugin can be as simple or as deep as you want it to be, and I seriously cannot wait to hear what you guys do with it. Continue to be excellent, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more upcoming content from Polyverse Music. Cheers.